In this video, I want to talk about the last computer you'll ever need. If you're in the market for a computer that's lightweight, fast, powerful, and has great battery life and is super reliable, you need to watch this video. If you didn't know it, we're going to be talking about a four year old computer, the MacBook Air with M1 chip. So first off, I've been using this computer for a little over three years as my normal personal computer. And I want to share some of the good things about it and then some of the things that I wish were different. And then at the end, I'll give a recommendation whether I think it's the best personal computer you could ever have. So let's get into it. So what's good about the M1 MacBook Air? There's a lot that I like about this computer. First off, it's fast. With the new M1 chip, Apple surprised everyone, uh, you know, a couple years ago and really just blew the competition out of the water. The speed of the M1 architecture is just great. The ARM architecture on these devices, the amount of compute that they're able to pack into these chips, it shows. And you can tell because the computer is snappy, it's fast, it feels really good. And of course it has a solid state hard drive, so it's fast all around. The next thing that comes with that, with the new M1 chip is battery life. Battery life has been drastically improved with the M1 architecture. It's able to conserve battery and give you power at the same time, which is just kind of like crazy. And this computer has no fan, so it's super quiet while it's doing it. I can charge this, take it with me, and it will go an entire day plus. It's, it's amazing. It's just, I'm used to my old laptop, which was a 16 inch MacBook Pro that lasted maybe two hours max while I was working on it. So this is the next level. The next thing that they got right on this is the keyboard. If you had ever heard about the butterfly keyboard or the different keyboard issues that they were having, the keyboard that they fixed, uh, having arrow keys that are dedicated with this format and the, not having that touch bar anymore and it just feels really, really good. Apple did an excellent job fixing the keyboard. They've always had really good keyboards, but they had a, a period of time where their keyboards were uh, a little bit uh, sus. So keyboard is fantastic. And next there's the software. If you're a Mac user, you already know what to expect, but you know, if you're coming from Windows or Linux, it's, it's a toss up. It can be tricky switching an operating system. I find it more intuitive. I find it uh, more beautiful, smoother, just kind of a better user experience, but not everyone feels that way. For me, the software is great. I, when I get a new Mac, I opt into the Mac ecosystem with the apps that I already own, that I know and love, and with a user interface that looks good and feels good while I'm using it. And that's important to me. The MacBook's large glass haptic feedback multi-gesture trackpad is top notch. And so if you've never experienced a Max trackpad, it is really good. And so the MacBook Air has that. Also, just as far as portability goes, the size of the MacBook Air is amazing. If you had seen the original keynote where Steve Jobs pulls out the original MacBook Air out of a manila envelope, it was just like, crazy. Like, are you serious? And now everyone's copying this thin design. Um, Apple's come out with a newer design since uh, that's not as that's not tapered like this, but um, still a super thin, light, portable computer that has the power and battery life of this is just it's just it's just wild. And then I think the last thing I'll, I'll say about the pros, why it's such a good laptop is, is it's metal, you know, fully aluminum metal casing. It, it's just super sturdy. It's not only does it look great, it's just, it's a beast. Like it's a tank. Uh, I still have a 2013 MacBook Pro that's an aluminum bodied MacBook and it looks and feels great still. The reliability on it, even though it doesn't get software updates anymore, it's crazy. So super reliable, but it's not all amazing. Right, it, they had to cut corners, right? Especially the price point. Most recently, I think I've seen it on Walmart for six ninety nine. I mean, that's a Mac, a full Mac computer with keyboard, mouse, everything, laptop for six ninety nine, is just absurd. Yes, it's four years old, 
But what are the trade-offs? Let's talk about them. Now, while I think it might be almost perfect, it has a few things that I'd like to see. First, it doesn't have a MagSafe charger. So you have a USB-C, which is great, to charge it, which everyone's moving to the standard, which I welcome. It's nice to finally have a the same charger on all your devices. It doesn't have the MagSafe, so you, you can, if you plug it in and you trip over it, you could risk throwing your computer, you know, hit falling, hitting the ground, right? So that's not great. So MagSafe would be nice. You can buy a third party magnet adapter, which is cool. Uh, I never have done that, but I'm also very careful and I charge it only in certain cases, you know, I charge it in certain situations. So it's usually not plugged in anyways, because the battery life is so good, but that's something that would be nice if it had. The next thing is the screen size. It's a 13 inch and my work, my last work computer was a 16 inch. So having, you know, three inches less screen size kind of is something to adjust to. And, you know, I'm getting kind of older. So like, I like to have things zoomed in a little bit more. So a 15 inch, 14 inch, 15 inch would be nice. Um, and it's not that. So it works, but uh, it takes some getting used to for me and maybe a little extra zooming. This is probably the biggest one is memory. Now this isn't the fault of the computer itself. It was more of completely 100% my fault because I wanted to save money, but I bought the eight gigabyte version, which was just kind of a stupid move on my part because I'm a power user. I really should have gotten at least a 16 gigabyte model. Um, I did get the bigger storage because I didn't want to be always worried about how much space I had, but I skimped on the memory and there's been a few times where that has kind of bitten me in the butt. The next one, I, you know, I don't use too often, but it's kind of a nice to have, and that would be uh, just a better front facing camera, right? The FaceTime camera. You know, if I'm making a call and talk to my family or something, it'd be nice to have a, a 1080p camera. Or if uh, I was wanting to record like a screencast or something or like a, a coding tutorial, it would be nice to have a little bit higher quality camera. It doesn't have that. I think it's 720p, um, but that would be a nice to have. And lastly, um, this thing is not a gaming computer. I don't think anyone buys an, a MacBook Air for gaming, but like this thing is not a gaming computer. It can play games for sure. And uh, it, it can play even like some pretty decent games, but it's not a AAA gaming machine. And there's a very limited amount of games you can get unless you're using like emulators and things like that. So this is not a gaming machine if that's what you want. It's not your last gaming computer. It's your last personal computer, right? Um, so just be aware of that. So what's the final verdict? Is the M1 MacBook Air the last personal computer or laptop that you'll ever need? I think so, given some constraints. If you could use an external monitor and the 13 inch screen doesn't isn't a deal breaker for you, and if you could even do the eight gigs of RAM instead of the 16, you could even go with the base model, then I would say yes, this is probably the only personal computer you need for a number of years. I don't know how many years it will get updates, but uh, it'll last for a super long time. And if you want to, you can always install Linux on it afterwards and it'll be a little Linux beast after that. I think this is the best personal computer that you can get for the money. I've done web development on it. I've done uh, iOS apps. I've done some light video editing, some audio editing, some photo editing, spreadsheets, web browsing, email, PDFs, all that normal stuff on it. And it has done super well. Of course, it gets bogged down if you do try to do more complex video editing, things like that. But it has served me super well. And it will continue to as a lightweight, powerful, fast, great battery life, portable laptop. Let me know in the comments what you think about the MacBook Air with M1 chip. I'll leave some helpful links in the description and thanks for watching.